About two years ago, I saw a watch pop up on my feed in my social media. It was by Damasco and it grabbed my attention. And it grabbed my attention more than most watches ever have. So much so that I delved into the brand, I delved into the watches and I thought, ooh, I would love to own one of these. But they're not the cheapest watches out there. They're not super high in luxury watches by any means, but they're not the cheapest watches out there. So I sort of got to the point where I thought, well, I'm probably not going to be able to justify spending this amount of money on a Damasco watch. But then recently, one popped up at a really good price in brand new condition. And I just had to buy it. Hello, you're watching James. My name is James. You're watching me and I am talking about watches and today, I'm talking about something rather special, a watch that I think is going to be a standout in my collection, the Damasco DS30 Blue. Blue because it has a few blue touches to it. A watch from a brand that I never thought I would get an opportunity to own because of price restrictions. But recently, one popped up on Marketplace at a price that was reasonable and with the quality of the watch still looking brand new, that I thought, ooh, that's stretching my budget a little bit but it's from a brand that I like, it's the model that I like, it's the color that I like, maybe I should stretch myself a little bit and buy this watch. So I did, I bought it. Obviously I bought it because it's on my wrist now, but I have to admit, after I paid the money, I became a little bit nervous. I became a little bit nervous because it wasn't particularly cheap, albeit cheaper than buying a brand new, and I was a little bit concerned that it would arrive and perhaps all these expectations I had for this Damasco brand may outweigh the actual watch itself. What I can say, even before we get into the first impressions video, is that this watch did not disappoint me. Not only did it sort of meet my expectations, it has exceeded it. This watch is absolutely incredible. And in the first impression style video, I wanna share what I first thought when I first opened the package. Let's check out my Damasco DS30. So I have to admit, I'm still in a little bit of a shock that I've been able to buy myself a Damasco DS30 Blue. I'm really impressed by it. In the box here, we've got a sort of a user manual talking about the elements of the watch and how to use it. Inside, we have a nice sort of black box. I have to admit, it's not something that has stood out to me too much, but for a watch at this sort of price, I have to admit, I expected the packaging to be a little bit better. It's perfectly fine. This is actually a hard box. And it certainly does the job that we need, which is to protect the watch. And realistically, this is going to go into my watch box drawer, never be looked at again. But at this sort of price, I have to admit, I expected it to be just a little bit better. But once I did open it up, and I did have a look at this amazing watch, there were six things that stood out to me. And the number one thing that stood out to me is the blue on this watch, that blue second hand and that blue calendar window there. When I was looking at pictures of this one online, even when I was looking at reviews of this one online, I was a little bit worried that that blue sort of looked a bit too bright, or perhaps it came across a little bit tacky. I'm not really sure what it was about it. I just sort of thought what, what, that it hadn't been done very well, or perhaps that it, it just maybe feels a little bit strange. But in hand, looking at it in real life, it is perfect. I don't know why it hasn't photographed as well as I'd sort of uh, hoped it would, or sort of representing. I think it's the perfect color, the perfect application, and it is a real feature without being too much of a feature. It is a bit of a popper color, but it is fairly subtle. But that leads me into number two, and that again is that date window there. It is really cool that it is in blue. Makes a real sort of interesting feature, and black sort of a black background there, which is nice, so it blends into that dial. But it does make it a little bit harder to read. It's not at a glance, see that date. It takes a little more of a moment just to sort of read what it is. Sometimes put it at a little bit of an angle. But I'm personally happy with that trade-off because I think it gives it an interest factor, and meaning that I have to take a little bit more time to read it on occasion. That's perfectly fine. Which then brings me into number three, and it is these crosshairs that are on the dial. Now, obviously, when I bought this watch, I knew it had that, and I thought that was a cool feature, and I thought it really added to this relatively simple dial, but I didn't realize how good it was going to be or how much it was really going to emphasize and add to the character of this watch. Because without that crosshairs, I think it really sort of wouldn't work as well. It just makes the watch. It really is something rather special. This watch has so many sort of small elements that really create such an amazing watch, and that crosshair is definitely a part of that. Number four, something that I was not expecting whatsoever because I haven't experienced this type of steel and this type of finishing before, but it's the feel of the case. This feels so soft and silky, 
I don't think I've ever felt anything like it before. Certainly no other watch that I've had before. You just touch it and you think, wow, it feels like it's sort of almost got like a detergent on a soap on it, that it's that sort of slippery feel to it. I'm assuming it's the type of steel or more so the hardening coating they add to this, but it really has a different feel to it. And it's just something that you sort of want to be feeling and it's a bit of a weird thing, I guess, but it just feels different, silky and smooth. And that's lovely and something I wasn't expecting. And that sort of leads me into the fifth thing is just the overall quality of the watch, which is something that I was hoping for and kind of expecting from a watch like this, from a brand like this, at a price range like this, and it hasn't disappointed me at all. The watch itself is beautifully well made. The dial, those gorgeous hands, those sort of blue hands, how the uh, crown has been put in, that sort of finishing of the watch there. The case back there is fairly simple, but it sort of looks nice, and the quality of the strap, yeah, it all comes together as a package of something that feels quality in hand. And lastly, the sixth thing which I was hoping would happen, but I wasn't quite sure, is just how much I love this watch. Honestly, I can't sort of explain how much I've really connected this with this watch instantly. I was really hoping that this would be something special, something that I'd really love, something that I'd buy and enjoy and actually want to keep in my collection long term. But I wasn't quite sure. You can never be quite sure sometimes. And because I'd never ever seen this brand in person before, I was a little bit unsure. But absolutely, the quality, the feel, or the look... I love it. So looking a little bit closer around it, you'll see everything is white on there. It's all printed nice and stark white against that sort of matte black background with those touches of uh, blue there. The strap itself is really nicely made to the point where it's probably going to take a little bit to wear in, a little bit of softness sort of padding in there, which is quite cool. Underneath, there's a, another sort of slight different type of material, which is even softer, sort of feels a bit nice on the wrist. Um, all branded there with the Damasco. Really nice hardware, which then is bead sort of blasted, which matches in with the case there. It is an all sort of bead blasted sort of uh, feel or look to it. Obviously on top of that nice slippery feel. You've got jeweled end lugs there, so we can swap straps nice and easily. Now this one, there is a bracelet that you can buy for it, but it costs a huge amount of money. But I have to admit, I'm very tempted to buy it because I love this watch so much. I'm gonna let it settle into the collection before I make that decision though, because the bracelet, would cost me the same amount as the watch did, and that's a lot of money to spend on a bracelet. And on wrist, I can certainly tell that this strap is going to need to wear in a little bit because it is sitting slightly funny, but I can certainly say the size of the watch, I think this is like a 39 millimeters, it's beautiful and it just looks really good. Sits down on wrist nicely, nice and slim, just a, a lovely, lovely looking watch. I'm so glad that I sort of made that leap of faith buying a watch like this at this sort of price without really knowing how much I would like it or dislike it. It's turned out to be a great decision. And if you like this first impressions video of this beautiful watch, maybe you want to check these two out next.